The state of Rajasthan in northern India is rich with beautiful natural landscapes and gorgeous man-made architectural structures. The lavishly flamboyant cultural heritage of India's largest state by land area is unmatched by none. Home to the Rajput kings who ruled Rajasthan from the 7th to the 12th century, much of this region's landscapes are defined by the Thar Desert and its surrounding arid lands. This is the city of Udaipur, also known as Venice of the East. Once dubbed the most romantic spot on the Indian subcontinent by a British administrator in the early 1800s, it is also known as the City of Lakes. We were amazed to find out that all of these lakes are man-made. The earliest one dating as far back as the 1300s. Some have been featured in a James Bond movie. We spent 18 hours exploring the former capital of the Mewar Kingdom of Rajasthan or the Land of Kings. <laughs> and we made sure not to miss out on the street food. This is my first time eating dahi puri and it's delicious. India is famous for its street food culture and Udaipur is no different. Man, this looks so good. From smoked pony tikka to bhutta, you find all kinds of food to tingle your taste buds. I love corn and I love this bhutta. <laughs> From 5 in the morning till 11 at night, our only job was to explore as much of this city as we could. And there is much to do here and we had incredible fun exploring this quaint city. Along with fun auto rickshaw rides, shopping for fabric and art and eating, there is a lot to see in the vibrant city of Udaipur. So this is something traditional and this is something special from here. The entire state of Rajasthan is a joy for those who can appreciate good architecture. And with its lakes, Udaipur also has something to offer to those who love bird watching. So get ready to hop on the auto rickshaw and see what you can do in Udaipur if for whatever reason you only have 18 hours. Subscribe to our channel to explore more cultures from around the world. Like and share the beauty of Udaipur. And get ready to meet the people from this beautiful city of lakes. A few years prior to this, these lakes had been completely empty due to lack of rain. Six years before, there was no water, no water here. How the come? Lake. Yeah, whole lake. Because, you know, four five years, no running. So all the legs are dry, people going by walk there. And the children they're playing the cricket. Yeah, on this lake. On the, you have to go to the uh, in the lake palace by rickshaw or by car.
Yeah. And so how children, many years has eh? it been since it filled up again? Uh, two years. Yes. So here is now is very good now. And this year, too much raining. So all the legs are full. Rajasthan is famous for its textile industry, especially block printing. Once you see, then you know what uh, you look Nepali. I don't know. Please, I show you very quick. So we went around the market next to Lake Pichola. If you wear more summer linen, yeah, it's linen. What are these feelings? I got many colors in this. Like if you wear more uh, pin strip shirts, pin strip shirts makes you slim and tall. You already slim and tall. If you are into shopping, Rajasthan offers you a variety of vibrant fabrics to choose from, whether for yourself or if you want to buy gifts. This costs uh, 1200 rupees and it is a huge scarf set, all hand work. All the women here, Rajasthan women, they make in by hand. So this is something the traditional and this is something special from here. The Lake Palace, located in the middle of Lake Pichola, is one of the symbolic sites of the city. Founded in 1558 AD by the Sisodia dynasty as the capital of the Mewar kingdom, Udaipur offers scenic views of lakes and hills dotted by magnificent palaces and forts. We saw this hotel right next to the lake, so we decided to go there and check out the lakeside view for ourselves. Udaipur was popularized during the 1980s after being featured in a 1983 James Bond movie, Octopus. <laughs> The use of colorful glasses and windows is a typical feature in many Rajasthani buildings, adding to their vibrancy. With the hills of Aravali mountain ranges of northwestern India lining up the lake sides, many old palaces and mansions that reflect the exuberance of Rajasthani architecture have now been turned into hotels. With Rajput era palaces in the scenic, greener vicinities of the Thar Desert and with seven lakes surrounding the city, Udaipur is reminiscent of certain European cities. We got here at Udaipur 
this morning early this morning and now we're just chilling sitting around at the city of lakes right next to the lake Uh, single shot. Single shot is small, like right? that kind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a couple of glasses of water. Yeah, that's what you want. Sometimes chilled beer by the lake is all you need. Drinking Kingfisher. By the lake in a European town of Labour. <laughs> it's really pretty here actually. It's like a religious place but at the same time the hills remind me of Pokhara. Like all the other lakes here, Pichola is also man-made. Built in 1362 AD by a wandering gypsy, the area gradually grew as a settlement. The part of the city that lies next to Lake Pichola is home to many Hindu temples. Boating in the water is a serene activity that you can do here along with visiting grand temples. So we decided to visit one of the most iconic temples here in Udaipur. The Jagdish temple that lies just outside the royal palace or the city palace is raised on a tall terrace and was completed in 1651. It is a beautiful example of Hindu iconography consisting of three stories of hand carved stone rising 79 feet high making it the largest temple in Udaipur. To reach the main shrine, one must climb 32 marble steps. Along with its intricate architecture, Rajasthan is also famous for its traditional art forms. We met this young man who was making this stunning image of Lord Krishna on the premises of the temple. This is a Kathmandu Mithilayan art gallery. Yes. When was that? Or in just April. Just this April. Uh. What is your name? Rohan Thakur. You will come across many talented artists, both young and old, while travelling through India. Right next to the temple, where artists working on more orthodox forms of Rajasthani paintings made on fabric. That here, so this is the rocks that you use to color. Yeah. We have six basic color and we need more color. We mix of color powder, we make different colors here. Okay. And brushes is tail from squirrel tail, the chickmunks. Wow. And that is like a gold and silver leaves here. Which is kind of ready to shop now. This is the painting on the silk. This one silk? Silk here. Yeah. The fabric here. Yeah. This is like a, this is a silk here. That painting when you roll four after sun, after the light, is never flat. And this is a three animals symbolized. Elephant for good luck, horse is power, camel for the love. There's a Jaipur, there's a Udaipur, there's a Jasalmer. Pink city, white city and golden city. We then grabbed a quick drink and headed towards another lake within the city. Look at him. 
We love auto rickshaw rides, so we hopped on one. Auto rickshaws are a very common mode of transportation here. A short ride away, the Fateh Sagar Lake is another of the many lakes here that were made to ensure a proper supply of water for the ancient settlements by former kings of Udaipur. <laughs> It lies towards the eastern parts of the city. Since October marks the beginning of tourist season in Rajasthan, there were a lot of domestic as well as foreign visitors. Colorfully decorated horse carriages and camels are a common sight here. And one can hear traditional Rajasthani music being played on the roadsides. With two small islands in the middle of the lake, Fateh Sagar is home to two parks built in memory of past presidents of India. This part of the city offers gorgeous silhouetted views of the surrounding hills, especially during sunset. The Nehru Garden and the Rajiv Gandhi Park lie in the middle of the lake. Both can be accessed by a short boat ride. We spent a few hours at the park watching the sunset next to the calm waters of Fateh Sagar. With the ending of the day, birds flew back home to their nest. As we embraced our surroundings, daylight disappeared and the night took over. Travelling can be even more fun when done with the right partner. Thanks to all the lakes and trees in the area, Udaipur is also an excellent place for bird watchers. As night falls, the city takes on a different kind of bustle. And as the evening unfolds, one of the most bustling parts is the street food section right next to the Fateh Sagar Lake. And there were lots of different varieties of food to try.
Yen limbu masala. Tikai. I'm going to go to the house. i to the ये मसाला ये चीज आई I have a channel. 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 I उसके बाद में मैंने ये है उनकी जगह मेरे फादर के 90 साल से यही काम करते हैं मटका गुलपी आइसक्रीम गोडा फलूदा स्वीट कॉर्न मेरा नाम हरीश साहू एक लड़का है एक लड़की है मिसेस है ये मेरी मिसेस कितनी सुंदर है वी देन वेंट इन सर्च ऑफ पानी पूरी बट देन वी डिस्कवर्ड समथिंग इवन बेटर From the moment we ordered the hipuri until it was ready, our mouth was watering in excitement. The whole world knows about the street food of India. And indulging ourselves in the flavors of Rajasthan was mind blowing. The taste of Daipuri was like party in the mouth. Oh God. So rich! And we have been hooked on it since. So this is my first time eating Dahipuri and it's delicious. As we were walking around, we came across a stall of paneer kebab that we had to try out. The way this gentleman was marinating the kebab was very satisfying to watch. Paneer's milky taste and thick texture make it the perfect partner for sorted vegetables. Damn, this looks so good. 
We also made many friends in this part of India where everyone was very friendly and approachable. There are plenty of cool restaurants and bars to hop around at night. But as we found out, the beginning of the winter also marks the start of the tourist season in Rajasthan, which is why many places were fully booked. That makes sense because the summers here are super hot. We visited another hotel that used to be a Haveli. A Haveli is a traditional mansion with distinct Rajasthani architecture and historical significance. Haveli literally means private space. A term that was popularized in India during the Mughal era between the 16th and 19th century. Ornate architecture and intricate design elements including detailed carvings, painted murals and colourful frescoes are specially noticeable at <laughs> night. <laughs> The warm, pretty lights on extravagant chandeliers gave off an ambience exuding a royal charm that can be felt throughout Rajasthan. We then grabbed a quick drink at the rooftop bar at Uday Kothi Boutique Hotel while enjoying the night city lights across the lake. October is a good time to visit Udaipur. Although the days can be a little bit on the hotter side, the nights are pleasantly cool. Hotels here are so pretty, we often lost track of time appreciating them. As we were about to walk out, we ended up chatting with one of the managers at the hotel.
Bye bye. Udaipur is called the Venice of the East for a reason. Its elegant architecture along the shores of beautiful water bodies and gorgeous hotels offering the majesty of royal Rajput traditions provide a magnificent setting for any traveler. If you are looking for a less crowded peaceful holiday destination in India, Udaipur ranks right there with the best. Having said all of that, it still shares the unique charm that only comes with traveling in India. Udaipur is one of the most beautiful cities not only in the state of Rajasthan but also in all of India. Like and share the beauty of Udaipur. Let us know in the comments where we should go next and hit the subscribe button for more epic travel guides from around the world. So rich!